Welcome to another edition of Islanders Insider. I'm Stephen King. We come to you from the locker room today here on the campus of Texas A&M University of Corpus Christi, where we're going to be talking some Islander men's basketball with head coach Willis Wilson, as well as Islanders tennis with director of tennis Steve Moore. Also, the special feature coming up later in the show, focusing on men's basketball and their complete coaching staff. These things and more. Right now, though, let's talk to the head coach of Islanders men's basketball, Coach Willis Wilson. How you doing, sir? I'm well. How are you? Very, very good. Uh, by the time this show airs, you know, you'll have completed your pre-conference schedule. And I've always understood that, like, these 12 games we're playing this year in pre-conference, they're designed to help you and your staff ultimately prepare your team for conference play. You know, what, what criteria are you looking for to accomplish or learn about your team during this stretch of the season? Now, that's a great question. I think in years past, we've always taken an approach that we want to use that pre-conference schedule to gain experience for certain guys to really build our chemistry and, and those sorts of things. This year's been a little bit of, a, of an unusual year for us. Uh, and, I, and I think that really starts with the success that we've had the last few years. Scheduling has become a lot more challenging than it's been in the past. The way the calendar's fallen, we've got these windows where we're not playing games and then these windows where we're doing extensive travel and playing, playing uh, a number of games in a short period of time. And that's, that's really what's made it challenging to kind of figure out some of those things. Ultimately, if you take a 30,000-foot view of, of, the, of the schedule and way things are laid out, the same goals are in place. We really want to build our bench. We want to build that chemistry, get some valuable experience for our young guys, and be ready to march into, into January uh, as, a, as a team that's really building momentum. We want to play our best basketball late in the season so that we can make that push in March. You know, in part of the pre-conference scheduling, there's always the travel, sometimes significant travel, and there are the perils of travel. <laughs> it's not all glitz and glamour by any way, shape, or form. Now, some believe that traveling for college basketball is kind of like living the high life, but uh, flight cancellations, six foot eight guys sitting in middle seats, um, and in my case, food poisoning. You know, <laughs> there's some unique challenges. Can you tell some of those unique challenges about the travel that takes place in college basketball? Well, I mean, you've touched on a number of things that we've experienced already sure, this already. year with, with team travel. And <laughs> it's, it's become customary that you go through those things. More, more and more people are traveling across the globe uh, at the higher Division One level. More and more teams are taking charters, so they, they really try to eliminate a lot of those problems. But when you're traveling to the extent that we have this year, I think it teaches you a number of things, but as, sure. a, as a head coach, you develop patience and you know that you always have to have a plan B in mind. I think with the players, it, it really teaches them about dexterity and the importance of being flexible and kind of rolling with the punches. At the end of the day, the games generally are not going to be canceled. Uh, people aren't going to feel sorry for you when you show up because you had a, a tough slate. And so I think it, it just builds that toughness, uh, mental toughness in particular. Uh, you, you learn to survive. You learn to survive and hopefully advance, you know, as you go through the through the process. And then you you kind of pick up the pieces on the other side and and make out of it what you will. Learn from the mistakes, uh, learn from the success, and, and keep rolling. You're also experiencing that unique time of year when it's the Christmas break, and then you have to release the athletes to to mom and dad for a little while. Now, what unique challenges present themselves when an athletes are released and they kind of break their regimen that they've gotten very accustomed to doing? What, what concerns do you have when that happens? You know, uh, just life concerns. No, sure. no major concerns. The, the concerns that I have for our players are the same ones that I have for my kids. Absolutely. The holidays, it, it, it's an amazing time and it's full of excitement and full of festivities. And for the young guys, they came to college to play college basketball. The games they watched as high school players on television this time of year, that's them now. And with the holidays and all the festivities, it does bring along stress. Finals bring along stress, the travel, the additional uh, travel uh, issues that, you, that you've touched on already with, the, with all the more people, the volume of people yeah. traveling this time of year. All of those things kind of go into play. And so we've just talked about trying to make good decisions. You have to guard your health, guard your body, and that means watching your diet, hydrating, those kind of things. Do your work in the weight room so that you can be preventative and kind of maintain some of that strength. And then when you're on the basketball court, enjoy it. I mean, that's why you're here. Just really get the most out of the experience while you're on the court. No doubt. Uh, talk about some of the athletes real quick. Redshirt senior Cole Martinez, his accomplishments this year. He came in after sitting last year. We've talked about him briefly before, but 
what he's doing, he, the way he's shooting the basketball over 50% from the three-point line in the top 20, actually maybe top 15 at certain times of the year in, in that statistical category uh, in Division One. But just plain and simple, it's about his consistency. Well, his consistency is not just about shooting the basketball. It's about his overall play. The reason why he's shooting the ball so well is that he values the system. He plays within the system. He plays for others. Uh, that, that can mean a lot of things, and we'd have to go into a lot of detail to really describe that. But I think with, in Cole's case in particular, here's a guy that understood the value of redshirting a year ago and went into the red search situation with the intention of getting everything out of that he could so that he could apply it. He used past experiences to prepare for a future circumstance. The future's here, and he's really made the most of it. I'm just incredibly impressed and really proud of him. The other thing that I think he really gets is he understands the body of work for Islander basketball, knowing that uh, people are going to double-team Rashawn Thomas, knowing how important it is to keep other guys involved. You should see all the things that he does off the floor in terms of getting guys in the gym in small groups. I mean, it's just one of those things that a mature guy does, talking to guys about different situations, uh, encouraging guys before and after practice. I mean, it's, it's almost like watching a coach out there when you see him operate the way he does. What's he planning on being when he grows up? He's going to be a coach. That's what he wants to be, no doubt. Coach, I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, right now, let's send it off to Shelby Hodges with an Islanders update.